All right, Adam, thank you. Meredith, welcome, and thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, Adam just referenced it, so I'm going to start with that. I, I, I was all ready to talk to you about, uh, about what you're saying with the banks. The Muni call, are you still standing by it? Um, look, I've spent the last four plus years um, working all around the issues of the states. And so by a muni call, meaning the commitment to the fact that states are making tough choices, localities are making tough choices, and there's not enough money to go around, absolutely. So you're starting to see defaults, but more importantly, you're starting to see people get to an inflection point where something has to give. So be it pensions being um, uh, being recrafted, as you've seen in San, as you've seen in San Jose, as, as you've seen in, more importantly, uh, uh, Rhode Island. Island, um, when you see social services being cut to the to the core, um, that's happening across the uh, across the country at, at an accelerating pace. And then you are seeing really strained municipalities. So the state of Michigan has a you know a, a fair share of its strained municipalities. Um, California has its fair share of strained municipalities. These are I think that this issue is going to be one of the biggest issues over the next five years. And so I'm very happy I've done the work because hopefully it prepares our clients and um, the public in a, a much more powerful way. You've been out there talking about the feedback loop from hell. Yes. Yes. What that is, is um, I have focused on, so I got into this whole uh, issue because I wanted to understand middle 2008. I was so early into the credit crisis, calling the credit crisis. I, mid 2008, I wanted to see what was on the other side. So how would the country Re recover and grow and really re revive itself. And what was clear was that certain regional regions and certain states were so, not only had such over -le levered consumers, but such over levered gov governments. So the single thing outside of obviously pensions and general obligation bonds are non negotiable. So they are secured by the tax dollars. Um, but Discretionary spend is the one area that budgets can cut, and discretionary spend is the one area that shouldn't be cut. So education, social services, public safety, um, infrastructure, those are the areas that are getting the most cut, violent cuts. And what happens then is people are paying more via taxes and getting less. So people are voting with their feet. So uh, you know very well the number of companies that are uh, actually leaving mm -hmm. California, going to places like Texas, um, and what then happens is this negative feedback loop from help where you have lower taxes, you have to cut more into social services, and it's a very difficult cycle to break. Meanwhile, uh, in other states that are having, that are rich aplenty with uh, tax revenues that are attracting businesses, they have all the money to spend on education, infrastructure, very social services. Very different feedback yeah. loop. Now, you've called uh, 2013 a show me year for the banks, arguing that the banks really need to differentiate themselves. They need to get smaller. They need to execute more effectively. What are you seeing so far? You're seeing just that. So the first quarter numbers came out of the last couple of weeks, and you didn't see revenue growth you know, for most of the banks. What you did see, you know, there were minor exceptions, but what you did see is a focus on bottom line, eking out the bottom line through cost cuts um, and through winding down assets. Um, and again, continued bleed on provisions. This isn't sexy stuff. So the banks that are the furthest ahead in terms of these initiatives, these cost cutting programs are going to perform the best. The ones that are behind are going to perform the oh, worst. Specifically in terms of cutting jobs, how much more do we have to go or have we reached Look, the Look, we've end? had, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs come out of the uh, of the industry, I think it's just going to be, the severity may not be as great, it's going to be a continued slow bleed, but you're going to see um, more and more banks you know, get more efficient in terms of their branching, get more efficient and kept from a capital markets players, um, what you're seeing are stealth cuts. Anybody specifically who's doing a really good job executing on, on all of these things? For example, City, you were tough You were tough on the new uh, CEO at first. Any progress oh, there? Um, I think the new CEO is, is uh, doing what should be done and identifying areas that can be cut. Um, he's just early on in the, in the process, but I, I think that he'll do a great job. Um, Bank America started its initiative back in 2010. So it's got so much effective wood to chop that I think there's the most upside still in that name. Okay, you th you called that the bank to own this year, so yes. nothing nothing shaking you from that. Um, revenue growth it, it, still going to be anemic going forward. Well, what, you, you have a couple of issues. So you don't have loan growth, and certainly for the big banks, you don't have loan uh, loan growth, and you have contracting net interest margin. So there's no real way to eke out revenue growth. Now that's not the case for all of the banks, but it's certainly the case for the big banks. Um, even a, a company like American Express is having the difficult time growing revenues. It's got modest revenue growth, but it's uh, uh, you know focused on 
expense reductions. There are names like Discover that had you know, reported last week and had 10% revenue growth. So there's growth out there, but for the majority of financials, um, there, you know, it's an uh, anemic growth environment. So talk to me a little bit about shareholder activism. Um, Activist investors are passing the baton to the big institutional investors. They are really pressing banks to be much more accountable on cutting costs, on executive comp, on other disclosure issues. Is this a distraction for these CEOs running these banks? Or are these necessary changes that they should be pressing on? Um, I think that the biggest message to bank CEOs is the share price. And so um, if the share price isn't moving, investors have a reason to, you know, call to arms. Um, in terms of activism, it's it's harder to ha be such an activist with bank management. There's so many moving parts. So I don't know. I'm trying to think of any big activists with, with banks. I mean, every, people vote with their feet in terms of the share price. So that's probably the most effective activ activism. All right. So show me the money, show me right. the share price, and that'll, right. that'll then get yeah.